you very much. By the skin of my teeth, I got here, I have to let you know. Um, Chairman, delegates, special guests, I am delighted that my role as Chancellor of the University of Ulster has provided me with the opportunity to welcome you to the Alzheimer Research UK's annual conference, and a special welcome to those of you who are visiting Northern Ireland or Belfast for the first time. And as you gather to share your ideas about your research and discuss where the next breakthrough might come from, you should remember that we Northern Ireland people are generally recognised for our kind nature around the world, a unique, beautiful, intelligent race that uh, is far superior to other nations. <laughs> There's something for you to research. Uh, a particular love, of course, is the Northern Ireland accent, which has been voted one of the sexiest in the world. So even if you can't understand it at first, do please remember that. Seriously though, you won't find a friendlier, more welcoming part of the world, and for that we should be very proud. And for those of you still going at the end of the, a long day of discussion, breakout sessions, seminars, and great thoughts, I'm told they do a fantastic pint of Guinness here, so remember to enjoy the hospitality. It is a true privilege for me to follow in the footsteps of previous speakers such as Jim Broadbent and Terry Pratchett, who have their own particular insights into the impact of dementia and commentary on the importance of the work that you do and the importance that you succeed in that work. You, of course, more than anybody, will be aware that in an ageing population, thousands more people will have to cope with dementia in the coming years, as many as a million by 2021. As a response to that, the UK needs to improve its care system and lift minimum standards to a new level. I know you're all involved in that work. I have seen it at first hand at the University of Ulster. When I visited the university in my role as Chancellor last November, I witnessed Ulster's biomedical scientists in their quest for groundbreaking, internationally recognised research into nutrition, diabetes, Alzheimer's and other degenerative diseases. The pioneering research taking place across a range of disciplines demonstrates just how important investment in research and innovation is if Northern Ireland is to make its presence felt internationally across a range of disciplines. Of course, the only long-term answer to dementia is new treatments. These can only come from research and that requires funding. We shouldn't think of dementia as inevitable and a consequence of ageing. Research can tackle it with enough support and resources. Your research has to succeed. Otherwise, the UK faces a future where people with dementia outnumber carers. I have the very highest regard for the work that you all do in trying to find ways to reduce the impact of dementia on individuals and their families. It has a devastating effect on individuals and families across the UK. Just to consider for a moment some of the statistics there are over 820,000 people in the UK who are living with dementia, with thousands more family members surrounding those individuals sometimes struggling to cope. Around half the population is affected by the impact of dementia through a family member or close friend. It is truly an awful disease and robs an individual of their identity and places enormous strain on carers and families. For those living with a family member with dementia, the experience is frightening, confusing and challenging with the associated overwhelming sadness often more to do with the carer's memories of the past and fear of the future than the sufferer. That in itself brings a certain degree of guilt and the hard realisation that a parent or a loved one will never be the same again. Of course, my own family has some recent personal experience of the impact of dementia. In June of last year, my mother passed away after a long battle with Alzheimer's. As I flew back from New Zealand, or Middle Earth as it was to me, uh, to bury my mother, it occurred to me that no matter how harrowing the loss was, and how keenly it will always be felt, there was nevertheless a sense of relief. Relief that my father, my sisters and I could say a final goodbye after the longest goodbye. And relief that my mum had finally been released. It is a shocking disease, and I'd like to take this opportunity to publicly thank the amazing carers in the Brooklyn Quarry and the Madeline Court in Port Stewart who did so much to ease my mother's suffering in her last few years, and for undoubtedly giving my father more quality time with the woman he married in 1953. Um, I hope you don't mind if I share just a couple of memories of what living with my mother's dementia 
meant to me. About five years ago, when it was becoming apparent that Mum could no longer live at home, I flew back to try and help uh, deal with the situation. She had reached what I consider to be the true nadir of the Alzheimer's condition, flitting between the present and the past, reality and fantasy, rage and fear. So at midnight during a storm, Mum decided she wanted to go out and find her father. He had died over 40 years previously. In the past, I'd always been able to soothe her by accompanying her on these trips in the pretense of getting her an ice cream. But this night, she determined to go alone. So as my mother strode off, bent and bow-legged, I followed her and watched the woman who, who grew me, who bore me, who nurtured and chastised me, who taught me how to love and how to be loved, disappear into the teeth of an Ulster Gale and out of my life. It was a poignant image and a savage reminder of the havoc Alzheimer's wreaks. My second memory is brighter, yet somehow more painful. The last time I took Mother out of her home, uh, we went to her favourite haunt, Morelli's Ice Cream Parlour in Port Sturt, up on the coast. Uh, it had been a while since she'd remembered my name, but there was still the odd spark of recognition. As we left Mor Morelli's, we emerged into a beautiful, clear, but very, very bracing Port Sturt afternoon. And after I'd spent about five minutes struggling to get Mum's gloves on her hands, uh, you'll know how difficult it is, it's like dressing a toddler. Eventually, the fingers that had been in all the wrong holes got secured. Mum looked at me, wide-eyed and smiling, said, James, it fits just like a glove. <laughs> but uh, whilst the impacts of dementia are very personal, they are also universal. It is the biggest challenge facing the UK and people are right to be worried. You here will know that those over 55 fear dementia more than any other condition. A devastating condition that robs people of their lives. And all those here would recognise the sentiment expressed by the great American writer Mark Twain when he said, Of all the things I have lost, I miss my mind the most. There's currently no cure. And dementia is the UK's Cinderella story. The UK is the bottom third of Europe, in the bottom third of Europe when it comes to dementia care. Yet with the right treatments and support, it is possible to live well with dementia. We must gear up to tackle this challenge by investing in research and support or else face a dementia catastrophe. Alzheimer's Research UK is committed to doubling the UK's investment in dementia research and I today urge the government to back that dedication by making a similar commitment through enhanced long-term funding for research into Alzheimer's disease. It is for government to set public policy and to fund research that improves lives for everyone. Through your work, of course, research is making progress. We now know more than ever about the genes that contribute to Alzheimer's so we can find new ways to treat it. Technology has helped speed up processes that would have been previously costly and time consuming. And brain scanning has improved beyond recognition. That has helped enhance understanding of exactly what is going on in the brain, enabling the development of effective intervention and treatments. It is you gathered here for this conference that I look to, to expand that knowledge and understanding. In you lies hope for many, not just today, but for the future, the hope for better life as the years advance. Now you may or not become famous, you may or may not become rich, but if your work answers the hopes and prayers of dementia sufferers and their families, you, through the legacy of your work, will be remembered forever. In the words of the late American president and scholar Woodrow Wilson, you are not here merely to make a living. We are here in order to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world and you impoverish yourself if you forget the errand. Of course, I am the Chancellor of the University of Ulster and I am particularly proud of the work that our own researchers do in this area and I congratulate them for that. On behalf of the University, uh, I would like to say that we are delighted that you have brought your conference to Belfast. If you do indulge in a pint or two of Guinness later, um, I can thoroughly recommend, notwithstanding last week's research on the amount of bacon that we should eat, that other great Northern Ireland delicacy, the Ulster Fry, tomorrow morning. Have a fantastic conference and I wish you every success with your work in the future. Thank you very much.